Hi guys, it's Lynn here. Hope you're having an amazing day. Now today guys, I'm going to be talking to you about the different types of epiphytic rainforest cactus plants that are around. And this is a special video request from Anna from Cactus Caffeine here on YouTube. And if you're not familiar with Anna, Anna's amazing channel, do go and check Anna's channel out, Cactus Caffeine, links up above. Anna's very lucky to live in Nevada and she has the amazing weather there. So um, do go and check her out guys. And I've got Hansi, my wonderful fiance, behind the camera filming the introduction. So also do go over and subscribe to Hansi's channel also, Family of Cactus and Other Beauty if you're not familiar so links also up above <laughs> and um, let's get going then guys I have a few different types of rainforest cacti in in our polytunnel some outside in the yard some in the grow rooms and the house and I'm going to talk to you about the different groups of different types because there's many different types and um, also share a couple of links um, up and down below to some care to videos as well so um, let's get that going then guys I'm going to start on this side first now then guys, what I'm going to try and do, because it's a large um, variety of epiphytic plants, cactus plants, I'm going to sort of keep it, to try and keep it as short as possible, I'll put it into groups. Now, we start off with one of the most common types of epiphytic plants, the epiphyllum variety of cactus plants. And this one here is my epiphyllum pegasus, that has been absolutely blooming beautiful. And... I, had, I have made a couple of care videos on two different types of epiphytic plants. One epiphyllum and um, in general all, this covers all epiphytic plants because the care is pretty much the same for all of them. And I've also done a how to care for Slumbergera, um, commonly known as the holiday cactus, Christmas cactus. And again um, care is pretty similar for them except that the Slumbergera flower throughout the, sub, the, sorry, the winter months and epiphyllum tends to be more spring and summer but basically they do like to be kept a lot more moisture and it's definitely a lot more humidity than the desert type of cacti which are all these these ones here but this video isn't a care video because as I say I've made two care videos on how to care for epiphytic cactus plants so if you want to know how to care for them do check out the video link I have down below in the video description of this video and also a link up above. There should be a little information sign if you hover your mouse over. Um, it should come up with the, the clicked video, the video on there and also be on the end screen as well. But if not, do check down below. So that will tell you all about how to care for both ep all epiphytic cactus plants in general and also a separate one on how to care for Slumbergera and also um, Ripsalidopsis, commonly known as Christmas and Easter cacti. So that's the care information out of the way. We do check the video links out, otherwise this would be a very long video. This is just to show you the different types that are available and also um, a little bit of a collection, show you the collection of the epiphytic ca uh, cactus plants that me and Hans have got. Now we start up here, as I say, this is epiphyllum and this is epiphyllum pegasus. We have a few different types of epiphyllum. As you can see, many, many, many different varieties, many different um, hybrids as well. Um, this one here. And epiphyllum is commonly seen with the long sort of leaf-like st uh, stem segments. Looks more, um, more like a, we we'll say normal plant, there's such thing as normal, you know, but not like a typical cactus like you see here. And these, as I say, grow, when they're not flowering, they're, they're pretty strange looking plants <laughs> and they, they form amazing hanging baskets they really do as i say we have quite a lot here i'm just going to show you the different types that we have got here they've all been absolutely blooming beautiful at the moment and uh, just take you outside we have a, a lot in our yard here's another one commonly known as the zigzag epiphyllum here because of its amazing leaf um leaf um, growth it's incredible isn't it look at that guys and this has beautiful flowers too not flowering at the moment but even out of flower it is absolutely remarkable epiphytic cactus plant that's the one there and so this all comes under the epiphyllum group our family and i'll show you some more of our epiphyllums <laughs> is hansi there <laughs> this is another one of our epiphyllums here just to let you know what these are like they're quite commonly easily available as well this is epiphyllum ackerman the eye and as I say they grow in the very long very long leaf segments here um, so that's the epiphytic cactus plants here too so that's the first group um, very very sort of common also very very common cactus 
Cactus epiphytic varieties there, many different types, and the colours on epiphy um, epiphyllums, the flowers, are absolutely breathtaking. So many different varieties. So if you're not familiar with epiphyllum, do check do check epiphyllum out online, and um, you the flowers will just take your breath away. As I say, they're moisture loving plants, and um, do love to be kept uniformly watered pretty much throughout the year. So do check out the care video. Next, we here we have the next part of. Um, um, epiphytic um, rainforest cacti. This is known as Ripsalis variety and Ripsalis is a, another genus of epiphytic cactus plants, quite a large genus range as well. Different different varieties and not exactly sure of this exact type of Ripsalis because this one wasn't labelled. It has lovely, again, lovely thin thin leaves here, um, if you can call them leaves, more like modified leaves and little tiny little flowers that form and they form little tiny berries as well. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous, um, amazing. They make amazing hanging baskets. So this is a Ripsalis and the Ripsalis group of epiphytic cactus plants, again, do look very different in all their different varieties. This is, um, as I say, not sure the exact variety, but this is um, obviously a Ripsalis. Um, I'll show you this other one here. This is another, another Ripsalis, again, looks very similar. And this one I have the name for, it is a Ripsalis, I think it's Albo, Alboreolata. Um, the name of this one too and um, this is similar in appearance but again has wider wider sort of leaf leaves on it and then we have different types of ripsalis here I'm just going to show you if there's any more of the ripsalis in here we have some outside too so we've got some in the yard and show this other one the ripsalis so they all look pretty different um, this one here this is also ripsalis and um, this one is ripsalis um, this one is Vipsalis pterii, this one, it has lovely sort of, this is a lot thicker um, sort of leaf, seg you they call them leaves as such, they are modified leaves, but it's more like segments, and you can see this one is different again, there's a few different types of this type of Vipsalis in here, um, different varieties again. And this one here is Vipsalis pendiflora, yeah pendiflora, and um, this has very long thin uh, stem segments here and as I say this one here the, pit the Ripsalis pterii has more thicker leaf stem segments and um, all in the hanging basket. This other one as well, this other different one again is more red variety here. Absolutely gorgeous. There's about five different varieties I've got in this hanging basket. Um, and so this is very clumping form as you see nice neat little little segments on this one and then this one more as the long the long sort of stem segments there. So that's that's quite amazing. And then we have another Ripsalis here. You see how the, how the Ripsalis family group look so different. And here we have Ripsalis, um, have the label on, yeah, Ripsalis crispata. And again, the, the Ripsalis is sort of familiar with the long hanging um, sort of stem segments here. And very different in appearance to the other very thin, thin uh, stem segments. As you can see here, these are much wider and they're lovely sort of scalloped scallop leaf, leaf um, segments on this and this particular Ripsalis, Ripsalis crispata is absolutely packed with buds outside here in the yard. It's getting plenty of sun and rain which he absolutely loves. Look at that, it's, a, it's incredible but packed, packed, packed with flower, uh, leaf, um, packed, packed, packed with buds and these gorgeous buds will form little tiny little white flowers going all the way, all the way around. It's very pretty so when this is all flowering I'll make a lovely video on it so you can see what it looks like. It is absolutely beautiful. Again makes a lovely, lovely hanging basket. And then we have another one here. This is a Ripsalis, um, the names, Ripsalis Kasutha, I have to label everything because I just cannot remember off the top of my head. Ripsalis Kasutha, and um, again, this looks like a load of grass, but it is actually not. <laughs> Ripsalis, again, by its little pendant, little hanging, little leaf segments here. Absolutely beautiful. And then this one we have, this is um, a rip, commonly known as the mistletoe cactus, and this is Ripsalis paradoxa. And this is absolutely beautiful because it grows 
um, almost like mistletoe and it has almost like a, a curliness about it. Unfortunately, this plant here is really, as you can see, it's really struggling. I've had it for many, many, many years, um, probably 20 years, and it is really suffering at the moment. I've took, as you can see here, a load of leaf cuttings that I'm propagating at the moment, both in soil and both in water, and keeping my fingers crossed it recovers. Not sure what is wrong, but it is struggling, as you can see there. So I've had to take a load of cuttings um, to see how it goes. I just don't want to lose this plant. I'm not quite sure what's happening with it, but um, I hope it will make a recovery. But this is a lovely plant in itself, as you can see there. To show these are different again, all the long stem segments, but a little bit hairy ones on there. Many, many different varieties. So that's the Ripsalis family. So we've done Epiphyllum family and Ripsalis family. Now we'll go on to the Hylocereus family, which is this one here, and um, this also here. This is commonly known as the dragon fruit cacti because of the beautiful, um, amazing, tasty fruit that these, that these cacti produce. Now these are very small plants, as you can see. Um, they're quite wacky. <laughs> And um, they commonly use Hylocereus as grafting stock for the common type of um, the red cap cacti you see that has the little the little red um, tops on them, known as the um, yeah they are known as the Gymnocalycium red cap cacti. Personally, I'm not a fan of them because using Hylocereus as a grafting stock, it's Hylocereus is not a cold hardy plant, and um, Gymnocalycium, which is the the red cap they use at top, is. And you just you just don't put the two together. They're nearly always well. They don't live long term, but sadly that the, the hylocereus is often used as grafting stock rather than used as a natural plant. Um, but it's a gorgeous cactus to grow, as you see here. This one needs a bit of a bit of a pruning back. It's easy just to prune them back. But they are not cold hardy at all, unlike other epiphytic plants like the Ripsalis and the Epiphyllum that can take cool winter temperatures. These Hylocerus does not like a temperature below 10 C, about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you grow these plants, they have to be overwintered in a warm spot. So if you have them outside in the spring and, spring and summer, bring them inside indoors for the winter. But these produce beautiful big white flowers. And um, again, they are known for the gorge, gorgeous dragon fruits that they produce. And this particularly, yep, this one is one I actually have grown from seed myself and uh, amazing from a seed I got from a, just a supermarket and um, very successful look at it now it's amazing you do need to repot this because it's practically hanging out of its uh, out of its pot but if you want to know how to grow um, dragon fruit cactus also known as Hylocereus from seed do check out a little video I've got coming up on the screen now links up above on how to grow dragon fruit cactus from seed so easy to do if you get a fruit from the supermarket or from a fruit shop and uh, good fun, as I say, both grown from seed, this one as well. And uh, this was actually grown from a friend when I lived in the south, south of Ireland. I didn't grow this one myself, but I did grow that one. So all from seed. And then, so that's the Hylocerus, again, another one here. This one I also have grown from seed, from a, a dragon fruit there, a smaller, much smaller one. Very um, lovely plant, but as I say, needs a lot more warmth than the normal type of um, epiphytic cacti do in winter. So that's Hylocereus covered. Now we're on to one of the most common types of um, epiphytic cactus plant, probably the most common type I would say, and that is the Christmas cactus. <laughs> I should say Slumbergera, Slumbergera, whatever you want to pronounce it. And there's quite a few different varieties in the, in the Slumbergera family. Um, as I say, we have a few different ones here. We have many, many, here again, many different types of um, Christmas stroke holiday cactus, Slumbergera cacti. Loads, in fact. We have a load upstairs in the grow room. So I'm not going to show you the whole details of them because there's so many and I made many, many videos on, on that. But basically, this is a very common epiphytic cactus plant. This is actually Ripsalidopsis, which I'm going to cover in a minute. But these are um, cuttings of Slumbergera here and there. And this one again. So the, the leaf arrangements are very different on many different types, many different hybrids. This one is more like a feather um, there. But the most commonly seen one will be this one. And there's two main, two different types of um, Christmas cactus um, that you can get. One will be the scalloped edging, like this. 
um, which isn't as commonly seen. And this is sort of known as the true Christmas cactus. Um, and this is more that the Slumbergia bucklei um, has the, the sort of lovely red flowers. But it's known for the scalloped edging. And then you have the Slumbergia truncata, which is commonly more known as the Thanksgiving cactus. But they seem to all be put under the category of Christmas cactus now because of the time of year they flower and um, as I say the um, trunc Slumboda truncata has the more serragated edging like this as you can see there um, more like the crab's claw as it's nicknamed on there as you can see and the true Christmas cat has the more scallop. But again, that's another video. I've made a video on how to tell the difference between Christmas cactus, Thanksgiving cactus and Easter cactus. And uh, so with all these links, do check out that link also up above um, and down below on how to tell the difference because it's sort of, sort of important if you really don't know and you want to know. It just explains a lot more detail in there. So again, I have some more slumber deers upstairs. I can show you in a bit, but this is the main common type, commonly known as the Christmas or thanksgiving cactus there and um, then we're going on to the next most common type of epiphytic cactus family now the second most common type here would be the easter cactus ripsalidopsis now the, the ripsalidopsis here is very similar in appearance it often gets mixed up with the christmas cactus because outer flower they do look very similar but the difference is obviously the easter cactus ripsalidopsis does flower around the more so around the springtime um, and the christmas and thanksgiving will be more during the winter months but the, they are quite different when you look at them closely the the leaf segments on ripsalidopsis are more elongated and longer and they're also smoother as well it doesn't have the the sharp edging or necessarily the scalloped edging that the Christmas or Thanksgiving cactus would have and usually as well it has I'll just show you there a bit of a red tint edging going all the way around it there um, not necessarily always but sometimes it does there and the flowers are very different this one is just coming into flower there the flowers are much smaller and star like than they are on the um, Christmas and uh, Christmas cacti very pretty so again ripsalidopsis will be very similar in care to the um, slumbergera um, but in general the easter cactus ripsalidopsis is a little bit more difficult to grow they are more rot prone and they can be more prone to um, scabbing and scarring on their leaf segments they also like to personally my experience like to be kept a bit warmer than um, Christmas cactus do. Christmas cactus can take quite cool winter temperatures if they're kept relatively dry in the, in the pot soil wise but Easter cactus um, is not as I, I personally find not as uh, cold hardy but that's just something I prefer to overwinter these at a minimum of about seven celsius um, minimum. They do well in our polytunnel over winter but we never let it drop below 5c so um that's they do pretty good here this is another one looking a bit tired here but that's because it's come to the end of its flowering um it is being watered it's shriveling up a little bit because a lot of the energy has gone to the flowering i'm going to get once that stopped flowering going to repot it and um, maybe take some leaf cuttings of this because it's looking a bit tired but um this is absolutely amazing when it was all in bloom that's ripsalidopsis easter cactus too so that's just the other family Ribsalidopsis, the Easter cactus. <laughs> so we've done Christmas and Easter cacti. And we have still got some more left. We have some, the Seleni cereus to cover, Pino cereus, which I'm going to show you inside the house. But the only other one I just want to briefly cover because it's partly, partly epiphytic and partly desert is the Aporo cactus and the um, Cloister cactus variety. Now, here we have the Aporo cactus, the most common one being Aporo cactus flagelliformis, which we have in beautiful flower there, as you can see. Now, this is commonly known as the rat's tail cactus. I have um, four different varieties in a hanging basket here of Aporo cacti. Here I have the rat's tail Aporo cactus flagelliformis there which has long sort of lovely stem segments here, lovely little hairy soft hairs. It's very safe to touch, it doesn't bite. And um, then we have other Aporo cacti here. Some are more spinier, 
This is a Poacactus malisonii, very sort of spiny variety. This is a Poophyllum, which is a cross hybrid between Epiphyllum, which is the one over there, as I showed you earlier, and a Poacactus, which is um, obviously this one, and that produces more wider stem segments as well. But these cacti are partly, I say partly epiphyte because they like a lot more moisture than the um, desert cacti do, but not nowhere near as much moisture as the typical epiphytic cacti such as Slumbergera Christmas or Epiphyllum do. I let these plants totally dry out in between waterings, even in the summer, and then give a good watering again. But in the winter, they don't like to be kept totally dry. I will come in the polyton and I'll give them a little bit of a water maybe twice during the winter um, because they do like to be a bit more epiphytic. So it's a little bit of a grey area with with these type of cacti, a porophyllum, they like to a bit of a bit of care between the both, both the desert and the epiphyllum. Um, a little bit different again. And then we have here, this is Clystocactus um, collodimonsis. And this again is a little bit of a cross. It does like to be have a bit more water than the desert cacti do. It doesn't like to be kept dry for long, otherwise it can sort of suffer from dieback at the tips and also at the roots. And that's with all cluster cacti in general. We have a few to show you the different types of cluster cactus here. Again, cluster cactus would come under definitely under the desert plant type of variety but they do I find don't like to be kept totally dry for very long periods they seem to go dead at the top sometimes and have die back at the roots but I always keep mine totally cool in winter because they're in a polytunnel but if you keep them indoors you may need to give them a bit more water during the winter but this one again is a little bit of a cross between both the desert and the epiphytic and um Beautiful plant, as you can see. It really is looks like a hairy monkey's tail, which is nicknamed the monkey's tail cactus. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And I give that, just keep it well watered during the, during the summer period and then give it more or less, keep it pretty dry during the winter. And um, that's doing very well. We have another one also over here. Yep, there we have, that's also the same. Different one again, this is more the golden, golden variety. Again, partly epiphytic partly desert so a bit in between both so that's all in here and now I'm going to show you what we've got in the house and um, just show you the Selenicereus variety group of desert um, sorry epiphytic plants and the Pinocereus variety now this is one of our Selenicereus cacti also known as Marneria chrysocardium and um, it is absolutely incredible guys uh, look at that I mean that is amazing it's like it looks more like a fern but it's actually a epiphytic cactus beautiful we keep this in our window in our living living room window it gets a bit of sun in the mornings but it's mostly in sort of bright light and it is doing very well there so again that's one of the selenicereus varieties and although it's one of the Selenicereus varieties, it also comes under Epiphyllum as well. So this is when it gets a little bit confusing with the different types of epiphytic plants. A lot of them will come under the same category. I've seen um, Epiphyllum coming under Selenicereus because sometimes they go by the flowers or sometimes they go by how the plant looks with its sort of leaf leaves, if you can call them leaves, um, modi modified leaves. And um, as I say, this one comes under Selenicereus um, Chrysocardium, but it also comes under Epiphyllum um, Chrysocardium also because obviously how it looks. Now here we are in my little grow room here and we have another Slumbergera. This is my old, very old Slumbergera cactus here, commonly known as a Thanksgiving cactus and we've already covered that but I just wanted to show you that one. And then we have some more Ripsalidopsis here, commonly known as the Easter cactus. This is the more um, very sort of small um, leaf variety, commonly known as Hatiora um, Ripsalidopsis, Hatiora um, rosea. And it has tiny little pink flowers. Again, commonly called the Easter cactus, but more of a smaller version of it. And as I say, I showed you the other Easter cactus earlier. And then we've got here... Yep, some more little Slumbergeras, commonly known as Christmas cactus varieties. All little seedlings and everything growing there. And then we have, I'm going to show you here the, the next group of epiphytic cactus plants, Selenicereus. As I say, I showed you the Selenicereus downstairs that um, came under the epiphyllum family because of how the leaf segment segmentation looks on that. 
looks more like um, a epiphyllum. But this is also Selenicereus, but it couldn't look more different. I mean, this does look more like a, a typical type of cactus in the sense it has all its spines on. Um, looking at it there but again this is also Selenicereus but it's nothing like Epiphyllum obviously but the reason why they're both um, the, uh, the Selenicereus downstairs um, comes under the Epiphyllum also is because of the um, when the flowers open it's just they're very similar when they go by the flowers um, this one here as I say, is Selenicereus grandi, grandi flores. Again, it has the lovely big white, huge flowers that is very common with epiphytic cactus plants. And commonly known, these type of group of family of epiphytes are commonly known as the queen of the nights because the flowers only really last for one night and they're often large and heavily scented and absolutely beautiful. And this here, we have a few of these Selenicereus grandiflorus. This is Hansi's um, cactus that he brought over when he lived in Sweden a couple of years ago. And he had to take a load of cuttings because the plant was so large. Um, that he had to take cuttings and potted them all up here. It hasn't flowered over here, but it has flowered for Hans in the past when he lived in Sweden. Lovely big white flowers and uh, hopefully it will flower for us too one day here. But as I say, couldn't be more different um, in a Selenicereus variety to the one I showed you downstairs earlier. But um, amazing, amazing plant. This usually just grows all the way up like a vine. Incredible. Here we have another Ripsalis. Lovely big leaf segments there. That is another Ripsalis variety. And um, here in the window, here now, we have some more Epiphytics as well. Um, Selenicereus there also. Another Hylocereus. Now in the window, I have my Pinocereus, also Epiphytes. Um, Pinocereus gregii. These are all young seedlings, about, about four years old now. Absolutely cute as anything. Look at them. Really cute. And then we have... Um, another one, this here, is also a Pinocereus. This is Pinocereus um, Kuxamanianisis. <laughs> um, Don't ask me how to pronounce that, guys. But this, again, looks more cactus-like. But again, one of the ones that has the big queen of the night sort of flowers, the Pinocereus. So there's a massive genus of um, epiphytic cactus plants. And here, Lepismium. This one is also um, one of the Ripsalis family. It looks nothing like the Ripsalis I showed you earlier. This is definitely more cactus-like. But believe it or not, it is actually part of the same family here. Under the Lepismium family, stroke um, Ripsalis. And it has lovely orange flowers on it. They've just come to the end there. And that's pretty much it. I think I've covered every type of epiphytic cactus plant. And as you can see, it is a large, large genus. So it's not a quick video to make. And Anna and Cactus Caffeine here on YouTube, thank you for the video request. I'm sorry I took so long to make the video. Um, as you can see, it's a lot to cover. And I hope you, you enjoyed the video, guys. And as I say, this is just to show you, talk to you about and show you the different type, many different types of epiphytic cactus plants that I have in my collection and that are around. Um, if you want to know more about how to care for epiphytic cacti, as I say, do check out the video links down below and also above at the top of the information screen on here. And guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you want to know how to grow cactus and succulents in general and you're new to the hobby, do check out my website, desertplantsofavalon.com. And guys, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for, for listening and watching. I don't want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness, and tons and tons of cactus power from across the Emerald Isle. And until the next video, bye.